Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Matthias McCutterin from Vantage Consulting. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Matthias McCutterin, the president and principal at Data Advantage Consulting. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Matthias, hello and welcome. Hello, Shannon. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Oh, I'm so glad to that you're here. Uh, we got to hang out at the our last conference, and it was just so much fun. So yeah, I'm so excited to hear more about your bio and and how you got into consulting. So well, let's start there. So okay, so you're the president and president and principal of at Data Vantage Consulting. So tell me what type of vid, uh, business is Data Vantage Consulting? Yeah. What do you do? So. So yeah, Data Vantage Consulting is a company uh, that offers basically you know, consulting, advisory, and educational services focused on data governance. That's a data governance with a specialization as well in change management, because I think it goes hand in hand, and data quality as well, because that's, to me, one of the most obvious pain points. So that's what we do. So um, we help basically big corporates uh, to mid-sized companies in various industries create, set up, implement data governance programs. Um, and I've uh, started this firm uh, about three years ago, uh, back in 2021. Initially, it, it went under my own personal name, but I changed the naming you know, to be a bit more you know, recognizable to Data Vantage um, Consulting. Um, and... I think what sets us apart is um, we we categorize our services in basically three uh, categories: so inspire, guide, and empower. So so with inspire, like it says, we try to inspire uh, companies and make them aware about you know what is data governance, what can it mean to me. So that are you know workshops, seminars, board information awareness sessions, uh, things like that, keynote speeches as well. Um, then the bulk of of the work, the consulting, is is, is the guiding part. Is where we really do you know the pragmatic, practical step by step guidance of these companies in in setting up you know data governance programs. And that's a variety going from you know auditing and assessments um, studies around data governance to you know I'm I'm talking about a lot about strategy sprints design sprints and data governance, so doing that as well, to full-blown data governance implementation. But it's all in the sphere of data governance. Um, and then finally, you have, you know, the empower thing is that it's really, you know, enabling the companies to to put the governance in, in practice. So doing a lot of training, coaching, focusing on that stewardship, that culture and uh, that kind of thing and, and ongoing support as well. So, uh, so, and that's what Data Vantage Consulting basically is all about. Love it. And in the community, data governance is a very common thing. So how, how would you define data governance and how do you explain it to the companies uh, and, and explain it why it's so important and why they need to invest in it? Um, so I, I have w one go-to definition. So data governance um, to me is basically another form of asset management. 
Uh, and so um, I, I, I'm involved also in lots of pre-sales conversations and and basically, you know, um, making people aware of what it is. And I have this this simple explanation where I say, look, um, you have you're a company or you're, you're a business owner, you're a CEO, CDO. Uh, and yeah, your company has an objective. So you can be a sausage factory trying to produce sausages, or you can be a big bank insurance company trying to sell insurances or a hospital, you know, taking care of people, but you have an objective as a company. And to complete that objective, you know, you have some assets that you need to, you know, put to work. If obviously you have people working in your company, you have money that you, you know, budgets for, for sales teams, budget for marketing teams, you have facilities and go on and go on. And of course, and you hear me coming, you also have data uh, and data is also an asset. And that's a bit the mindset that I try to get into people. Uh, because if I take away the data from your company, then yeah. If I take away your customer data, then who are you going to sell your products to? So, you know, getting that awareness about, okay, our data is an asset and perhaps we should treat it with the same rigor as we do with our money and with our people. And that's what data governance is about. It's setting up these guardrails, these policies, procedure. And uh, and I, I one um, comparison I often make is I compare it with, human resource management, because that's something that a lot of business people I talk to can relate to is, is mm. HR an HR department, you know, they set out um, rules and guidelines, how managers and people in the business, you know, work with people, what guiding principles they should, you know, follow, you know, we don't discriminate and, and uh, all these kind of things. And also there are policies on how to hire people take performance reviews, all these kind of things. So that's, they set out the rules. And that's what I also try to do with data governance is, you know, we set out the rules, how you treat the data. Um, and mm -hmm. that's that's how I see uh, data governance and how I explain it. And and, and it, it's, it amazes me that it's still a big mindset shift that needs to, to happen uh, with a lot of business uh, owners and business people, uh, or even IT people as well. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It really is a big need out there, which is why I ask, cause we get asked by our community a lot. And how do I, how do I, you know, explain to our executives that this is mm. such an important thing. Yeah. So tell us, yeah. us, okay. So we know where you are now, what you're doing this awesome thing. So, so let's kind of get into it. So tell me, uh, was this the dream when you were when you were very definitely. young, like say six years old? Was this a dream? Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a data governance consultant. Yeah. What was the dream? <laughs> no, back when I was younger, I wanted actually to become a movie director. Ooh. Yeah. So um, I, I was big into movies. So in back in um, in uh, high school. Uh, I switched to uh, a high school which was focusing on, you know, art, arts, uh, with a specialization in photography and film. So I went to that high school. Once I graduated there, I started uh, a, a course or, or you know, uh, uh, a, a minor, how do you say it? Yeah, minor in movie directing um, at, a, mm -hmm. at a famous uh, art college um, here in Ghent in Belgium. Um, and I started out and it was really fun. But then I also got other courses like philosophy and, you know, uh, art history. And I was really more into that theoretical lecture part than practical movie mm -hmm. directing, technical kind of things and lightning and all that kind of thing. And so it was a bit of a dream that was shattered, like, is this movie directing? And I was more into those philosophy courses. So I dropped out of uh, the art college, went to the university, did an attempt to graduate at philosophy, but I didn't went very far, took it like half a year and then switched to sociology. Um, oh. So, which is a bit of an in-between, which also has uh, to do with a lot of data. So I got statistics and all these kind of things. 
Um, but um, so I graduated with sociology uh, as a bachelor's degree. Um, and then at the point that I need to go to my master's degree, I started to, you know, Google uh, job opportunities for sociologists. And so that wasn't so, uh, yeah, <laughs> looking very bright. So it was either academics or, yeah, mm-hmm. nothing else more than that. So I, I I completed a master's degree in business economics because an economics degree opens more doors. And so I ended up doing that. Um, so yeah, again, very far from the movie directing, but still not at the data part. Um, and so, yeah, I graduated with a master's degree in business economics. Wow. Well, that's, you know, and that's not too untypical to, you know, as self-discovery, trying to figure out who we are, what we like, you know, as part of the university experience, I think. Yeah. But, uh, okay. So tell me, so you you graduated, you have your master's. So tell me about your jobs after that. (laughs) So, um, so basically my life is like, um, yeah, a sequence of following my passions and what I'm passionate about. So it went from, movie directing to philosophy, sociology, economics. Um, but then, um, so I, I still needed to write my thesis uh, at the last year. So I had a bit of spare time and lots of my friends were already graduated. So it took me a bit longer. Um, and so they were already working. And so I thought, hey, perhaps I can combine writing my thesis and working. Um, so I started to look for a job. Um, and so one of the obvious, you know, jobs you can get with an economics degree is a sales job. So I landed this sales representative job at a company called Hilti. So Hilti is a big uh, global company. They manufacture and sell um, products for the construction industry, for more for the professional end users, you know, drilling mm-hmm. machines and, you know, anchoring systems and so as a young guy, I drove these typical red cars, went to construction sites, sell drilling machines, and then in the evening, complete writing my thesis and doing a bit of research for those. But it was fun because, you know, as a student back then, you know, uh, you uh, one of the benefits was you get a company car, you get a laptop, you get a cell cool. phone. So it was like, yeah, we are, it's a win-win. And, yeah. you, and I got money. Um, so so that was the first job. And it was being a sales representative that I got into the data um, because, you know, suddenly I, I, I had the ownership of the customer and contact detail data of uh, plumbers. I was responsible for plumbers in my region from like, 300 plumbers and those company data and needed to manage it. And I I was so into, you know, cleaning it up and making the data quality look better. And I don't have that guy's email address. I need to have that guy's email address because I know, yeah, then I can mail him and I can do, you know, marketing activities. And so I was really into that data part uh, without even knowing, you know, what was data quality, what was master data. So, and a couple of months into the sales representative job, there was this vacancy at the headquarters in, in, in Brussels for, they called it, was called Local Process Expert Market Reach. So it was a very fancy title to say, hey, look, uh, you're a data guy and you will look after the quality and the master data and a bit of the governance of the customer data. And I was like, yeah, yeah I'll do it. And so that was my introduction into data. Um, And then suddenly I was responsible for, you know, setting up data quality uh, initiatives for all the sales representatives to to increase the data quality, uh, managing uh, the master data in SAP, um, following policies, which were still made corporate, following and implementing the policies. So I was doing all this data stuff, which was new to me. Um, but it really, you know, I really find it very, I find it very, you know, attractive and it's satisfying. And, um, 
And because there weren't, that was back in 2011, so 13 years already. But there were, there was no, I was not familiar with data diversity back then. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I was, yeah, I bought every book on data that was there. So got the book from Bob Siner, got the first book from John Ladley, you know, Enterprise Information, Information Enterprise Management. Um, you know, got the DM book. Uh, so um, yeah, started to read up. And so that's how I became familiar with data governance. Um, so yeah, and then um, to continue the story, uh, yeah, a couple of years into that job, uh, I switched to, um, yeah, I wanted to take it up, you know, next step. Uh, more into data governance because that that was really was fascinating me um mm -hmm. and there was this data governance expert role um at the biggest chocolate factory in the world Barry Kalabal so wow. they make yeah so and and, <laughs> and and one of the biggest factories is in Belgium so they make chocolate for you know from from here up until China, Australia, uh, America. So, um, so, and I was um, responsible. They were just rolling out the data governance for the uh, product master data. Um, and Calibra just had set a point, a, a proof of concept up there. And so they wanted me to roll it further out uh, for customer master data, vendor master data. So yeah, um, I went to Bar Calabar, uh, stayed there for four years, and that was really my learning school. So everything I learned, put in practice, was uh, responsible for a lot of data migration projects, was responsible for the quality, the master data, the governance for the customer master data. Um, and so that's that was really my, my learning school. Um, and so long story short, after that, I went into consulting been doing consulting now for six years, um, did projects at big companies in retail, banking insurance, uh, government even, um, and three years ago started Data Vantage Consulting. And um, before you know it, you're 13 years, more than a decade doing data governance. And then you look back and so, whoa, okay. <laughs> I love that journey. Okay, so first off, if in case anybody does not know, Belgium is home to some of the best chocolate in the world. Exactly. Yeah. It's so how even... fun that you're going to spend some of your journey there. <laughs> yeah, it's even like this. Um, so there's this food claim, um, which is Belgian chocolate. So it's an official claim. You can only put on a chocolate product if it originates from Belgium. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's, it are the Japanese. They really love Belgium chocolate or the Chinese. Yeah. Um, so what they really want Belgium chocolate, um, which means that you know chocolate comes in many forms. You you have the bars, you know, the solid ones, mm -hmm. but they also produce liquid chocolate, you know, to create mm -hmm. other products from. So the chocolate factory was in this little town in Belgium. So what mm -hmm. happened on a daily basis? these containers with liquid chocolate they had like these ventilation kind of systems running 24 7 mm -hmm. to keep the chocolate liquid they mm -hmm. drove it with trucks to the port it was shipped on a on a boat and that chocolate still being liquid sailed across the globe to land <laughs> in japan and china and australia where they want true belgium chocolate so that happens on a daily basis from this small, small town that has, that's the largest chocolate factory in, in Europe or the world. That was that's uh, amazing. kind of a supply chain over there. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand why there's a high demand. I, having, having experienced Belgian chocolate in Belgium, that was, yeah, that was, it's amazing. Yeah. Okay, but I digress. We're here to talk about data. <laughs> With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. 
<laughs> so, okay. So tell me, why did you decide to start your own consulting company? Um, because I, I always have this entrepreneurial spirit um, in me. So um, I did previous attempts to start a consulting company. This data vantage consulting is the first one that really works. Um, but yeah, I love doing it. And I think I love doing it also because, um, sounds strange, but I really have a passion for data governance. I really believe it's one of the major, you know, um, management things that need to happen. Um, and so I love helping, you know, lots of companies. Uh, I have fun in, 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 in helping them. I have fun in doing it. Uh, I have fun in seeing it become a success. And so I thought yeah, the best way to do it is start a consulting firm and, and, and help them that way instead of, you know, taking this job for three years, going to another job, another job. So want to reach as many people as possible. Um, and so that's the reason why I started the company uh, alongside also, you know, the thing of being uh, free more um, and being able, because I can make my own choices as an entrepreneur, you know, to take on opportunities like speaking at DGIQ and so on. So, uh, so that's are the main motivators to starting my own company. I love it. It truly is a story, an end to end story, as diverse as it is of yeah. following your passion. And yeah, yeah, and we do not find it weird at all in this community that data governance is a passion. It's it's a great thing. <laughs> yeah. And perhaps to make the circle round, I can create a movie about data governance. <laughs> and, and so at the end, I'm still a movie director. I want to <laughs> see that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. I need to see if, if Brad Pitt is available to play the data governance <laughs> officer. <laughs> That I, I, that would be amazing. So, well, tell me though. So, um, you know, in this journey, you know, what has been your biggest lesson so far in your career? Um, biggest lesson is um, so my journey has been with ups and downs, um, but I think um one of the things. Like I said previously, it's a chain of following my passion. So um, so my passion went from movie directing up until data governance. Um, also now, um, um, I, for example, I have a, always also had a passion to write a book. So at the moment, I took the leap. Uh, I'm writing a book. Um, I have contacts with publishers also. So I hope this year still my book comes out. It's about the strategy sprint, design sprint, and data governance. So, so it's, it's taking that leap and either you win or you learn from your mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes, uh, over the, the decade and before that. And to me, it's always, you know, if I look back, I reflect on it and I see it as a learning opportunity, um, which I can capitalize on and, and learn from that and then create a win. Um, so it, I could always look back and say, ah, why didn't I finish that degree or, or why did I, you know, uh, dropped off art school. And so, but to me, it's, you know, following my passion. And, uh, and so that's a bit my, my motivation. Then. It's, it's great. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And I love that lesson of, um, taking a leap and not being afraid to fail yeah. and that, that those failures are an important part of, of yeah. taking the next leap. Yeah. The same for, you know, starting a company and being an entrepreneur is, is one of the biggest leap that somebody can make because, you know, I was in, we call us this golden cage at Barry Calabar. You know, I had a very good job, well-paid company or whatever you name it uh, in a big corporate um, but I chose to leave that all behind and go for the insecurity of consultancy and being in, you know, an, an independent 
a freelance consultant and finding my own gigs, doing my own marketing and creating my own invoices, hoping that the client will pay within 30 days. So, but by taking the leap, you know, you win also kind of things. So, uh, yeah. very nice. Very nice. So now having worked with data for so long, and um, we talked about your definition of data governance, but what's your definition of data? A definition of data. Um, it, to me, data, and I see data like everywhere. So so it's it's indeed like the typical ones and zeros, but it's also, you know, an email is also data. Um um, when I watch Netflix, it's also data. And so basically data to me is like, you know, kind of information that you act upon. So um, for example, um, if I need to, um, so I'm the chef at home. So I uh, plan the week menu and to plan the week menu, I go to my, you know, my cupboard and my stock and see, okay, what does, okay, do I still have pasta? Okay, one pack, I need two packs. So you're basically looking at the data and planning and making decisions. And the same goes in, in, in business. You know, if, if you're doing, you know, your sales forecast, uh, you look at the numbers and you make decisions on what you're going to do, uh, or hey, you want to optimize some processes to reduce costs, all these kind of things. So data to me are like these essential uh, pieces of information that you use to make decisions upon and and that's why i also see it as an asset because if you take it away especially in a business context then yeah you don't have anything more than an, basically an empty box with people in it and um, and so you need it to you know make decisions plan make you operational uh, get your objectives there um, so that's a bit how i look to data Makes sense. That's a great definition. So, uh, you know, do you see then the importance, the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, and and I'm, I'm following a lot of trends on what's happening. And I really am super convinced that it will only increase um, and I see a couple of, of, of reasons there is, um, first of all, I see that there's this uh, big shift is happening in the workforce um, in companies. So you have, um, you have the boomers, um, which are typically people who are at a company for quite a while. They have a lot of knowledge about processes, data assets, all these kind of things. Um, and they are retiring very very soon so you have this you know drain of knowledge but on the other side you have the generations after the boomers which tend to be more people and i'm one of them who are more looking towards you know career opportunities and job hopping so you have these like this um struggle of companies to keep that institutional knowledge mm. with them meaning that they now need to think okay Perhaps we need a business glossary and a data dictionary, and perhaps we need to put those processes, document them before that John or Marcia goes uh, on retirement or Peter leaves for another uh, C-level job at another company. So I see that happening, So, which also involves you know, more jobs. Second, especially in Europe, we have a lot of regulations coming up. And one of the biggest ones is related to sustainability and ESG. It's called uh, CSRD, which stands for Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directives, meaning that a lot of companies, more than 10,000 across Europe, need to be, will be obliged to report on what they do, you know, environmentally, socially, governance-wise in the upcoming years. That brings with it that they need to find the data, find people who, you know, can report on the data, make it qualitative, make it, you know, governed. So that only that regulation and you have the AI Act, you have the Data Act uh, coming up as well. So all these regulations will trigger also jobs. And then 
thirdly, what I see is, of course, you have AI. Um, and now, just over the course of one year, you have the explosion of generative AI and all these companies like, what do we need to do with that? So, and also with other AI applications. And hopefully there's they have that mindset that, okay, data triggers or is the fuel to AI models. So being garbage in, garbage out, managing the data properly would get us more better AI results. So also that triggers to me, you know, an increase in jobs. So you have these like internal, external demands on companies. Um, and, and I see an increase in on C-level and, and shareholder level on the importance of data governance, putting them more and more and at the top three strategic uh, things. Um, this, this will bring jobs. And to, to, to give a little uh, side story here, uh, we have this television program here in, in Belgium called uh, The 80s for Teenagers. Uh, and so it, it's about um, uh, a television host who takes the teenagers on a journey through each uh, year of the 80s. Uh, and so I was watching the the, the one about 1980. And so they, they talk about the music and what's happened and they show news reels. And there was this news reel where they said, hey, look, there's something new at 1980. It's called the chip. And so the chip, it's a job killer. It will replace everybody. It's a real job killer. Um, mm -hmm. So if you reflect back on it 40 yeah. years later, you see, oh, well, that was one of the biggest opportunities ever. Uh, and it will be that it replaced some jobs, the same with AI, but it created so much more jobs. Um, and I'm convinced that data and, and, and AI alone will do it as well. Uh, so, so that's, I think... Yeah, it will increase. I love that perspective, and especially you know, and, and you know, there's been a lot of talk around AI and, and things like that. But I love the perspective of a, uh, a generation who's retiring and retaining that knowledge. Mm -hmm. I, there's, I don't think there's a lot of companies who think about that and uh, and should because because you're yeah. right. That's a lot of knowledge that goes with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a brain drain. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. What then? What advice would you give to people looking into getting into a career in data management? Maybe even specifically data governance. I would say, um, and I still I think it's one of the the best advices is read a book. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's um, tempting for people to, uh, you know, listen to a podcast that also helps and 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 read articles, but reading a book of somebody who really put time and effort in researching the material, putting all their experience over the past years into one copy, that really helped. It, it helped me. Um, so, and and if people want, you know, a book recommendation list, feel free to reach out. But um, a book is, is the best thing. I, I read a book. Uh, it's from uh, Stephen Cutler. It's Peak Performance. Uh, and in his book, he also mentions, hey, look, if you want the best um, time and a uh, time investment and value for your time investment, just read a book. Um, that's one thing. And second, take courses uh, like Dataversity. It's an awesome platform. Uh, I don't get any, you know, money for saying this, but it's 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 one of the the best thing who of people, um, my peers like John Latley and uh, Kelly O'Neill, the net. They're really great courses, um, giving all their expertise out there. And if you really want to have, you know, crash course in it, um, do that uh, and connect with people. Um, everybody, uh, especially at conferences, everybody has some data war stories, things mm -hmm. that they encounter, you know, mm -hmm. things that, that don't go well, mistakes that people made, um, try to get these as well. Um, and I think if you combine those, that will already give you a good, solid foundation. Um, and then secondly is, yeah, you need to do it. Find a job that really gets you your boots on and your hands dirty and uh, and try to, you know, manage data and do data governance. And uh, that would be my advice. 
Oh, great advice. <laughs> and and when the, my, one of my favorite things and about this community, the community of data practitioners, is everybody's so willing to help each other out. Everybody yeah. loves talking about data. You know, nobody is going to judge for questions. It's just it's just really great community. It's amazing. I I was um so when I was at DGIQ in in Washington last year, I was so amazed of how approachable everybody was. Um, you, you know, like John Ladley and Bob Seiner, they are like rock stars to me. But I ended up having dinner with them and talking mm -hmm. about them and and having their cell phones, and they're so approachable and they give mm -hmm. so much you know, value of their expertise. And it's, it's so great. So to very, you know, thankful community, the data governance, data quality community. Yeah. Well, Matthias, thank you so much. This has been so fun to learn about. Yeah, your journey. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for having me. I really enjoyed, you know, talking about my passion. Well, well, thank you. And I'd be remiss if I didn't ask if somebody wanted to uh, solicit your consulting services, how would they find you? Uh, just go to datavantageconsulting.com and there's um, everything we do on Inspire, Guide, Empower. It's all there. Um, it also links to my personal website, matthiasvercouteren.com, where you can also see my speaking engagement, my articles I wrote. Um, so those are the two sources um to check well, that's great and we'll get that uh those links posted to our website as well to the yeah. podcast oh uh, well again thank you so much for this great conversation yeah you're welcome it was a, a really honor and it's a real pleasure to be here so thanks a lot shannon oh likewise and to uh all of our listeners out there if you if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest podcast and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.